I would like to reflect tonight just about how I think All Saints Day is a really important feast for us in our own time and, and culture that we find ourselves in. Um, because I think most of us and most people in our larger culture, at least, um, and, and maybe to some extent that that works its way even into us who are believers in the larger culture, certainly there is this great sense that we aren't sure who we are anymore. Right. As as individuals or as as a larger community, we're not sure who am I, identity crises, all these kinds of things. I was reading a, a wonderful essay from one of my favorite authors. I've talked about him before. His name is Thomas Howard. And this essay that he wrote is really brief and beautiful. It's called, Who Am I? Who Am I? Right? Asking that question twice. And he said, you know, look, if you were given the phrases, Who am I? Identity crisis. I'm not sure who I am. My self-concept. These kinds of things. If you were given those phrases, you would know that it was coming from a person in the 20th century. He said no one, you, no one said that kind of thing. No one asked that kind of stuff. Even in the cultures that come before Christ. You don't hear the Greeks or the Egyptians in their poetry or whatever it is asking, who am I? Right? They're asking lots of other questions, but they're not asking that. Right? And, and so Thomas Howard goes on and talks about all the art that we have today and all of our movies and music and, and all those things, it all assumes that somewhere we lost ourselves and we have to grope for any straw of affirmation that might float by about who we are. He said, we, we are sending up flares signaling, help, what are we? And so he said, we consult gurus and sages and horoscopes and palm readers, fortune tellers, or you join a group that will nudge you toward an answer by getting you to sit in a circle with them or breathe with them or dance with them or work through your hang-ups with them. He said, when did this happen? When did this start to happen? Why is it now? He said, probably after the Renaissance, okay, maybe somewhere in the 18th or 19th century. He said, when we exiled the gods, we kicked them out. We, we, we don't believe in gods anymore. But he said, the problem is, is that all we had then to contemplate, all that was left to think about when we got rid of the gods was ourselves. That's all we had to think about. And he said, when we start to ask this question, who am I? He said, the prob- one, of the, one of the problems with that is there's always, there has to be a distance between the asker of a question and the thing that the question, that the person's asking about. There has to be a, a gap so that one person is standing here asking about that thing over there. He said, but when we say, who am I? Identity crisis, I'm not sure who I am, what am I, who am I? He said, we, we rip apart ourselves and we add a false divide into ourselves where we're now asking about ourselves, but we can't ask about ourselves if we're really honest, because we're the person. We can't study ourselves from the outside. And so when we ask that, we're creating a divide that's not supposed to be there. Now, in the midst of this, then, Thomas Howard, who, a Catholic, says that in the midst of this comes Jesus Christ, right? In the midst of this question for us, for you and I, comes Jesus Christ to show us salvation, right? And a lot of times we're offended by the fact that Christ has a lot of rules, the Beatitudes from tonight's gospel, all these different teachings and commandments and things that we should do, things that we should not do. Indeed, lots of people get really angry about that and reject what Christ is saying, right? Deny yourself, love your neighbor, love God, all these kind of things. He said, Thomas Howard said, and I I know this to be true, and I think it's super important. He said, a lot of people say this. I know I've said it in my life. We say, I'm going to take all that stuff that Jesus is asking me to do, and I'm going to set it over here. And then I'm going to get to that as soon as I find out who I am. As soon as I answer the question, who am I? I know all the things that Jesus is asking, and I'll get to that. Once I answer this question about me and who I am. 
But God would say this. Must you answer that question before you get to this? In the Bible, there is a curious lack of any suggestion that our business, you and I, our job is to find ourselves, to find out who we are or to discover ourselves. None of that language is in the Bible, Old Testament or New. Christ never once said, find yourself. And here's where, moving forward, what do we, okay, how, do we, what, how do we move out of this? And this is the beautiful conclusion, I think, that Thomas Howard leads us to, and, I, and again, I think, is, is, is spot on. It is in doing these things of God. It is in really praying, really serving the poor, really fasting, really being humble, really living out the Beatitudes, the Ten Commandments, and all the other things that Christ is asking us to do, the thou shalt and the thou shalt nots, and trying to conform our lives and actions to that, that I also discovered who I am. My real freedom, my real personhood, not in looking for it, but in learning to love God and my neighbor by literally doing it. I then find myself by not trying to find myself. I think it's dangerous to preach about yourself or to mention yourself at all on All Saints Day. But I'll just say that very imperfectly, I can recognize that, this idea, that for some part of my life, as a teenager and as a college student and beyond that probably as well, that question that comes from our culture was part of me. Who am I? I need to find myself before I can get into the business of God. But it has been through doing the things of the priest by simply saying, I don't exactly understand all of it. I don't understand why these things are always done this way. I'm going to stop asking questions, and I'm going to get to work. And it's been through those things that I have discovered a completely uh, who I am without looking for it. And who I am now is somebody that my 18-year-old self or my 25-year-old self would have never guessed, given a thousand years of thinking about where will I be and what will I be doing at the age of 40 none of it would be this. I would have never fathomed. So it was whatever time I spent as a 16-year-old or an 18-year-old or a 25-year-old thinking about it was a waste of time. And I found it by getting to work and doing the things that we were asked to do in the seminary and in the scriptures through being a follower of Christ. I think a lot of times with these saints that we celebrate, we're drawn to their stories, right? Hopefully we are. Hopefully we know some of their stories and you have a few saints that you're close to. And I think a lot of times we think, you know, what would it look like if I lived like St. Francis of Assisi, right? What would it look like if I was like Therese, you know, who died as a teenager? What would it look like if I was King St. Louis or John the Baptist or St. Dominic or the Blessed Mother or St. Joseph And that's a good thing. Those those are good questions to ask. Those are good things to think about. The lives of the saints are good to sit and contemplate and think about. They call us to heroism. And we see the beauty of how they all lived their lives. But I think we also have to know that in this age where we question our identity and we're not sure who we are and we spend a lot of time staring at that, we have to find ourselves first. And we think that we have to find ourselves first. Before we hop on that train, we won't. We won't do it. We won't find out who we are until we pick up a shovel and get to work doing the things that God is asking of us. And again, when we do that, we'll wake up one day somewhere we never planned being a person. We never planned on our own. And could never have known when we were 18 or 50 or 90 trying to find ourselves. What any person's life will look like when they begin to follow God is anyone's guess. 
but it's a waste of time to guess. You and I will be as varied as St. Louis the King was from St. Damien the leper. One was the king of a country, the other was a priest to lepers. Both were saints. You and I, when we live the things that God is asking us, when we live the Beatitudes and the things that Christ is inviting us to do, you and I will be as different as the bookish and nerdy St. Thomas Aquinas was from the warrior princess St. Joan of Arc, leading people on the battlefield. It'll be varied. You as a saint will be very different than I as a saint, will be very different than this person sitting next to you will be as a saint. And that's the beauty of today. And that's what we can celebrate. Do you want to know who you are? We hear it in the second reading. In your baptism, you are now a son or daughter of God. That's who you are. And by living that, you're called to things in the gospel and in the scriptures. And it's time to get to work on those, living them out. There's a great song and hymn that we sing sometimes that is a variation of Scripture where it's God saying, basically, do you want to know who you are? You are mine. You are mine. That's it. And that changes everything. And now it's time to start living what it is to be his son or daughter. And knowing that when we do that, the question, who am I? will evaporate and never be a concern again.